There it is. All right. How do we make um, your faces? Oh, here, I did it. It was in the way for my present. All right. Do you want to start, Shabbat? You can start. All right. Hi, everyone who joined us today. Thanks for coming. Happy Saturday. So as you all know, we're going to be doing workshop five on career clusters. Um, and we basically kind of made sure to include careers that our mentees filled out in their Google form. That's kind of how we went based off. So everything that we're going to cover today is basically on what um, they have suggested. So hopefully, Solomon, there's something here that you posted in your um, form. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Ruth, as you know. So today we're going to be talking about um, medicine uh, career cluster, engineering, journalism, and performing arts, and then social services. So you're gonna be able to see um, a bunch of career options within those fields that you may or may not be interested in. And then a couple of options that you probably maybe didn't even know were available to you. Okay, so one of the first fields that was super common was um, medicine overall, but they gave like multiple different um, positions. So I kind of just did like a quick summary of each, but one of the first ones um, was a pediatrician and really like what pedi pediatricians do is that they work with children's health, which includes like overseeing their physical, behavioral and mental health. Um, and then they also like diagnose and treat illnesses. And it's very similar to a doctor, but what puts pediatricians like very different from them is that they have a more in-depth knowledge and growth about children specifically. So um, a doctor, of course, like knows just as much, but pediatricians like fully dedicated to practice, you know, to work with children. Um, their schooling is your regular for your bachelor's degree um, or really it'd be a BS, a bachelor's of science. And then they would graduate from med medical school for four years and then go into like a specific pediatrics residency program. So they have a lot of schooling to do as any doctor should have a lot of schooling to do. Um, but their annual salaries approximately like range from 150 to 180 K. And I'm sure it goes higher than that because it depends on like the positions they have, the years, the degrees, um, the experience, the hours. So they're making that hundred plus K a year. And they work with um, newborns up to 21 year olds, which I did not know they go up to 21 year olds. Um, but they do really, anyone can have a pediatrician. It's up to them to decide when they wanna stop. Um, but typically, they care most more commonly for newborns up to 18 year olds. Ah. And then in nursing overall, that was also like a super common one, but there's different kind of nurses. So your first one can be like a registered nurse. And they're the ones that have that direct, um, they're the direct caretakers for patients in hospitals. So if they need, a, you need, they need help with their meds, assessments and records and all that. Then there's also nurse practitioners and they kind of do the same thing, but they do have more training than RN. Um, they also run labs and tests and give diagnosis, but um, they all kind of just rank in different, in different positions and they do very different things and sometimes some similar stuff. Um, and then there's also a licensed vocational nurse um, and they just provide like the basic medical care, administer meds or just kind of track um, patient progress like with charts and stuff but they are most likely to be under supervision of like an RN or a doctor. And these three kind of range between the 70 to 90K. And then um, the ones that you probably will see more so at a clinic is the medical assistants. And they kind of just support physicians and other health professionals. Um, so like if a physician, you know, opened up their own clinic, they'll most likely have medical assistants there and they make between, you know, that 30 to 40K. And this could to be a medical assistant, like you can kind of go to like those trade schools. So this is the more easier route if you're looking into the medical field and you want to get that position quick versus these. So um, another one of the big ones that we saw and the interest of the mentees was engineering. And um, in this one, we're just going to go over like a few of the major engineering um, branches, there's a 
whole lot and there's a lot more that we don't talk about but these are just more some of the more popular ones that we're going to see and yeah so um engineers engineers use math science and technology to solve problems in different settings so they're usually trying to create or design things um using other things and then create products from that uh you'll see so there are different types of engineers like um civil engineers they design and supervise construction projects so they take care of the roads the buildings the airports bridges systems for sewers and um all that stuff they create those projects and then they supervise the construction of them they work with um obviously like construction companies and stuff and they're there to supervise and make sure that everything comes out the way that they designed it and to make sure that it works out perfectly. Mechanical engineers design, build, and test mechanical devices like tools, machines, etc. There are many different branches of mechanical engineers. There's automotive, there's thermal, there's um, other things, and it just they just do um, what the specifics say. So if it's an automotive mechanical engineer, they look at the vehicles and they design, build, and test vehicles. Um, electrical engineers um, design, develop, and or test electrical equipment. So like exactly like a mechanical engineer, but on electrical equipment. Chemical engineers mix and create chemical presses to make certain products. So they take different chemicals and then they mix them and do a bunch of stuff and then hopefully get the product that they want to. Meanwhile, petroleum engineers look for oil and natural gas under the Earth's surface. So they're looking for those uh, reservoirs of like oil and natural gas and then try to get them out, which is kind of bad for the environment, but you know, whatever. Next slide. So here's like the, um, we're looking at like the average mean salary for each of these little branches. Civil engineering, um, it's about 93,000 a year. Like Liz was talking about, um, the same as in medicine, engineering, it varies on your position, um, your degree, and how many experience, like how many years of experience did you had. One thing I did notice is that um, you need a lot of experience in engineering to get a good job. So it might be a good idea to start getting internships early on in your undergrad career, just so you have that experience under your belt. By the time you graduate, you can get into a good job. Um, for civil engineering, you need a BA or a BS, usually a BS in civil engineering, which is a Bachelor of Science, like Liza said. Um, it's about four years. Um, you also need a license for civil engineering because you're providing services directly to the public, whereas in other um, kinds of engineering, you're working with kind of like other people. In civil engineering, since you're building or constructing projects that will service the public directly, you need to have a special license, which you can usually do in the same school that you get your BA in. Um, chemical engineering, it's about 115K a year. Also needs your BA or BS in chemical engineering. Um, mechanical, same thing. It's, mechanical engineering is about 93K a year. Electrical is about 101.6. Same thing, needs your BA. You're gonna need your BA or your BS in all of these and engineering for all of these. Specifically, the, the one that you want to do, like mechanical, you need to do mechanical, electrical, you need to do electrical engineering. Petroleum engineering, though, is the only one that you can get your BA or BS in petroleum engineering, but a lot of schools don't have it. So you can go for mechanical, civil, or chemical. And that, the, the um, companies or your employer that you want to work out will probably take that. Petroleum engineering, though, makes a good amount of money. It's about 137k a year. And then, yeah, I think you can go on to the next slide. Um, I put, I asked in the chat that, like, what was Solomon's career interest, and he said engineering. Um, so Solomon, do oh, sorry, do any of these are any of these like your specific engineering like career interests, like the paths? <clears throat> uh, yeah, probably uh, civil engineering, mechanical, or uh, electrical. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, like I said, you just, um, civil is the only one that you need a license for. And that's if you want to um, work directly with the public service. 
I do know though that if you want to get like a higher job or if you want to advance in something, you could go for your master's in engineering and that would give you a little step up. But that's just like if you already have a job and you want to advance in the company and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, do you have any questions about civil engineering or anything like that? Uh, no, not really. You know what it's all about and all that stuff. <laughs> um, I know that CSUB has a good civil engineering program and a lot of schools have civil engineering. So you could probably go to any of them and they'll have that major for you. Okay. The next um, field that we're gonna be doing is journalism and performing arts. We put these together because it's kind of like the same, they're all arts or whatever. Um, but we'll talk about things. Okay, next slide. So for journalism, um, journalists are, there's many different types of journalists, just like there's many different types of engineers and medical practitioners. Uh, the main goal of journalists though is to collect uh, um, news or information and distribute it to the public in an honest and truthful way. Um, and obviously then you have to be 100% not true. So the different types of journalism, you have broadcast journalists, which are the people who um, tell the news or distribute the news on cable news, like CNN or on the radio, NPR, you know, things like that. Things that like go on TV and talk about the news or go on the radio and talk about the news. Then you have print journalism, which is newspapers or magazines, like the New York Times, the LA Times, um, whatever magazine you can think about. And they print it out and send it out usually on a daily basis. I think the LA Times is on a daily basis and things like that. And then you have internet journals, which um, they distribute information on websites and blogs. There's a kind of iffy thing about if internet journalism is actual journalism, but for now we're saying it is because it is a big part. It, it's a big career and you can do a lot with that. Um, the different types of journalism, writing or reporting that you can do, there's opinions, you can do features. Um, features is like talking about other people's lives, like you go out and you interview people and you talk, find out what you can about their lives. lives um, there's entertainment, you talk about what's going on in the entertainment world. Sports, obviously, talk about what's going on in sports. And then investigative, which is where um, you like talk about the news or you investigate some things that are going on around your community or around the world. For most of these, um, actually for all of them, you're gonna need a BA in journalism and communications or communications. It might be, the major might be journalism and communications, journalism or communications. It depends on the school that you're going to. And it's about four years to complete it. You don't usually need any more schooling after that. Um, and you do, it's not required for you to have the BA in journalism. It's just a little easier for you to like know what's going on and things like that. Um, the salary for broadcast journalists, it's about 52 a year. For print journalists, about 44 a year. And then for an internet journalists, it's about 54. One thing though about journalists is that they do a lot of freelance work, which means they go out of their job and do work on the side for other companies and they can get a lot of in income from that. So this salary and a salary number isn't taking that into account. So you do have to think about that. These journalists may be making a lot more money than what is being stated there. Okay. Okay, finally we have performing arts. Um, this is, performing arts is just whatever you do, you do something and then you perform it in front of people. So actors and actresses portray characters in TV shows, movies, and even on Broadway. Um, their annual salary is between 38 to 72K. And um, you don't need a degree, but a BFA, which is a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Theater Arts or Drama is optional. It takes about four years. It depends on the school that you're going to. Um, they may have, they may call it Theater Arts, they teach you all the same stuff. They may call it drama or something like that. And then within the major, you might find um, like a specific acting program that you can apply to. And then 
you'll do that through the major. They'll teach you all about acting. But there's not a specific like acting major at any one university. Um, and then something that I just find out about actors is that it's not that there is that they get paid a little bit of money. It's they do get paid a lot for each project they're in. It's just that throughout the year they're not in many projects. So that's why the the amount of money is so small because it's a lot of unemployment time between projects and you don't get any money through that. So then for singers, singers create, perform, record, and release music. They perform in concerts, tours, and or music festivals. Their annual median salary is about 62,873. Again, you don't need an official degree to be a singer. Um, there are BAs in music theory and music performance, and those are recommended. You can find those at most universities. Okay, and then dancers. Professional dancers choreograph and perform dances in TV shows, movies, music tours, music tours, shows, and even theater productions. There's different dance styles. There's ballet, there's hip hop, and modern contemporary. And then the annual median salary, mean salary is about 67,839. Again, you don't need an official degree, but many universities offer a dance major. They just like teach you the technical stuff and all that. So there are many ways to get to become a professional dancer without a degree. Um, and I think that's that for that. For these, for performing arts, um, like it said, there's no official degree needed. You can go to school though and learn the technical aspects behind all of these and just have that as a backup in case um, you know you find yourself that you're unemployed. Well, you can be you can be some kind of technical job in the field. You know, you can be a stage manager for a show or something like that. And you have that education as a backup to back you up while you work your way to becoming an actor or a singer or a dancer or anything like that. Okay, all set. Okay, so social services. This one I think just has like a little bit of everything. Um, ah, why does this keep doing it? Um, so to begin with, uh, we kind of combine these three together that seem that they kind of fit along the same lines. Um, but for real estate here, um, what they do is, you know, they help their clients find a house that best suits their needs, um, their price range and their interests, you know, so they're just trying to help, you know, a couple or a family or just an adult, you know, find a house for them. So if you were considering real estate and you want to go to college because you do need some type of certificates or licenses, People who end up going to universities end up um, probably majoring in like marketing, finance, accounting, or business. And with the real estate uh, field, you're not necessarily like there's different positions you can take on. You can either be an investor or like a flipper where people buy houses that are kind of just a mess and they flip them and then they make a lot of money off of it. They could be a managing broker as in like they manage um, real estate offices. So if there's like a big company there's usually like, like that one person who takes care of that or a property manager. So for those who like live in apartments, there's always that one manager. So that's like, there's a lot you can do with real estate. And then approximate annual salary is that they can make 46K to 100K. Um, but again, it kind of just depends, at least with real estate, the amount of hours they put in a week. If they work maybe 40 to 50 hours a week, they can make up to that 100K, maybe even more. So it kind of just depends on your hours. As for a banker, um, I always thought just bankers just <laughs> cash checks and that was it. Um, but I have a few friends, I have three friends who are bankers. So I asked them like what they do on a daily basis and my mind was kind of blown. So they do your, your like, of course your basic, they open new bank accounts and deposits and checkings but they also work with businesses. So like if they want an ATM machine or a credit card machine in their, in their space, um, they have to work with the bank. If they want loans to open up a business, they need to work closely with the bankers. They run reports on like the money that's going in and out, or if they have like old money, they have to report it somewhere else because it's just, you can't really use it anymore. If it's like it has Sharpie and falling apart, right? And then they manage house loans. So for people who come in and want a loan for a house, they have to go to a specific banker to deal with all that. So people um, typically major in business, finance, communications, 
marketing, economics, sociology even. So with the majors, you're going to see that they kind of repeat themselves because really you could kind of major in anything and make it pretty broad and go in different directions. So that's sociology is going to be like a really common one you'll see in like many different fields. But as for positions, they have more than just, oh, I'm a banker. You know, they have a teller, they have a loan officer, investment advisor, a manager, a branch manager. So there's different positions. And even with tellers, there's like a teller and then a teller one, a teller two, and then manager and then investment advisor. So they have multiple ranks. And then, then, then they go from 35K, which is usually like the beginning positions, they can work up to 70K and then even some 100K. So there's all you can do with working at a bank. And um, you don't necessarily need a degree though. One of my friends that's a banker didn't go to college and then two of them did go to college. So there's, um, there's like some flexibility with this field. Um, as for business owners, um, they do manage the day-to-day -day operations of their business. And you know they manage others, they're the boss. They do manage finances, especially if it's a small business. Usually it's the business owner playing the role of being a finance major, um, finance manager and all that. Um, they do strategize again because it's they're in charge of their business. So they can strategize how they want their sorry, how they want their marketing, their vision of their business to come off. And those who really kind of want to just be a business owner, they typically major in business, of course, finance marketing, economics, communications. Um, again, because I think, you know, as a business owner, you're constantly talking to people. So communication is gonna be super helpful. I think even if you majored in business, but took a minor in communications, that'd be really helpful. Um, but again, like the positions you can take on is um, CEO or um, a founder, because sometimes you may be a founder of the program, but sometimes when it's like these big corporations, Usually the main, main boss is never doing the real work. They hire staff to do all that. So you can take different, different routes here too. So you ultimately you can decide, you know, you're the owner, you're the boss. And approximately for small businesses, they start off with that 60K. But again, if you're like a huge, like or a relatively huge business, then that's going to range. But it's going to just depend on the size of your business, how many people you're reaching, um, the marketing and all that. Do you have any questions so far, Solomon? I know it's a lot of information on different stuff. But if you uh, no, you guys are finding it good. Okay, great, thanks. Um, and then on to a different field, right? So social work and psychologists do also go hand in hand. So what a social worker uh, does is they help individuals, families, kids, and groups of people to cope with or resolve their problems they're facing to ultimately improve their lives, right? And those who want to be a social worker, some suggested majors are, of course, social work. Some universities do offer that as a major. But if they don't, you can also major in sociology or psychology. And with a social worker, um, there's different positions you can take on here, too. You can be a child and family social worker, a school social worker. Some of them are based at the schools, a substance abuse social worker or just a social work professor. Like if you wanna be working at a community college or university, you can be the professors teaching others how you know to become a social worker. So um, that's obviously has to come more with years and that's later on in your career. But they start off typically from 70K up to 100K. But I mean, if they have already had like multiple years of practice and maybe even open up their own company, of course that 100K can go up, but this is typically like where they land psychologist um they a little bit you know a little bit like social workers they do help patients and stuff but what they do is that they examine and study the mind and behaviors um and with that they offer treatment for these services because oftentimes it's like mental emotional behavioral disorders and people typically major in psychology of course but they can also major in social work or in sociology so they're pretty, they're pretty flexible also. And again, you don't have to only be a psychologist. There's clinical psychologists. Um, those are kind of the ones at the hospitals for people who really have kind of intense like mental disorders, um, counseling psychologist or a psychology assistant or a school psychologist. You know, not a lot of schools have school psychologists on site. And if they do, it's probably only one serving the hundreds of students on campus. 
and um, a psychiatrist too. There's a lot you can do here. And they also kind of range between the 58K to 100K. This one I for sure put plus because some of them end up opening up their own clinics and just make a huge business from there. So this can go, this can get you far if you really get into it and open up your own practice and hire other people and you're the boss. Um, and then we also, have, we also had working with youth. And I think that was just super, super broad. That's why I didn't put a definition of exactly what they do. So some of the majors that you could pursue and still work with youth is uh, liberal studies, which is to be an elementary school teacher. You can major in child development. That's if you wanna be a preschool teacher or work specifically with that young infant, newborn age group. You can also, again, major in social work. You can be a school counselor, whether it's um, elementary school, middle school, high school, or even college too. You can just simply major in education. Um, I know UCs oftentimes offer minors in education, so that's an option. And again, you can major in sociology and psychology. And within all these majors, some of the positions you can pursue is of course, you know, be a teacher, preschool teacher, daycare center director, or you can even be a teacher at these daycare, daycare center directors. You can be a school counselor or a special needs um, specialist, a principal, a district superintendent. So there's a lot you can do here too. And their salary is also super broad. I mean, more on the teacher, teacher preschool, range you make between that that 60k but if you are like looking into being like a principal or district superintendent um, that's when they reach like that 100k plus so I know sometimes it's interpreted that people who work in the educational field don't make a lot but it depends what position you have the degrees and the hours and the experience you can you can get up to that 100k or plus <clears throat> And then lastly, activists. So what they do is basically is they work to promote for social, political, economic, or environmental um, reform. Sorry, that was a typo. With the desire to make a change in society, ultimately to have like a greater good, right? Um, so, and this is kind of, can be flexible too, because you can interpret how you wanna be an activist. You know, if you wanna be in person and, um, do all these great things, but if you also want to work behind the scenes and run a social media page, and that's your form of being an activist. So this is also very broad, kind of like what you want to make it. Um, but if you really want to take this to the next step and make make like huge differences or do something bigger with being an activist, you can pursue some de some degrees and you know major in communications because of course as an activist you're going to be communicating a lot of what you want to see, you know, like a lot of the change you want to see. You can major in economics political science, ethnic studies, which is basically like an overall study of different races, ethnicities, genders, sexualities, all that. But if you wanna be like really specific, like let's say you major in ethnic studies, but you really wanna be like a woman's activist, maybe you can take on a minor of like women's studies, African-American studies, Chicano studies. So these are just some majors, you know. And then positions, I left this blank because again, this can be whether if you wanna kind of just do your own work and run a social media page or a website or work for a nonprofit. So this is also kind of like what you wanna make, um, you, what you want activists to mean to you, you know? And salary, some start off at that 33K, but again, it's because some activists, you know, tend to work for a nonprofit and you know, that's what it is. They're not making any profit for themselves and the money that they're making is being donated to other spaces. So, you know, it's not a lot, but, I feel like, to, to be honest with you, I think the people who are meaning to be activists, I don't think they're going into it for the money. I think it's because they genuinely want to see change. Um, so I think you can take any of these positions up and still be an activist. So don't feel like this is the only thing you can do, you know? Any questions so far? Because that kind of just concluded really quickly. All of like the stuff that we got asked or in the, in the Google form. Do you have any questions on anything, Solomon? I know kind of you were interested in engineering and that got covered pretty quickly. Uh, no, you covered it. Well, already then. So that was basically our presentation for today. We have like, you know, like a little bit over 15 minutes left, but we did plan. Oh, actually, no, we were going to ask something for Andrew's workshop next week, right, Ruth? 
Yeah, so um, next week's workshop is kind of going to be like this, but also kind of not. Um, theirs is going to be about overall interest. Um, so what you think you might be interested in doing later on in your life, um, I think. And then um, also major interest, like um, what you want to study in college. So um, just to for that, if you want something specifically um, for them to talk about, shoot us an email or DM us or something, and um, we'll make sure that Andrew talks about it in his presentation next week. Okay, so since we ended early, um, we did, because you know, it's right before Thanksgiving, we wanted to do like something like a little fun. So we wanted to play another game, um, but it's like a quizzes. Like we did it at one of the first, I believe it was workshop two, the one that I gave with Megan. But up to y'all, do y'all want to do a Disney one or a quick, simple icebreaker one? Oh wait, Alondra, I think you're muted if you're trying to say something. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's talking to me. Oh, okay. Um, let's do the Disney one. Okay, this one's 20 questions, but we can always shorten it if y'all think that's too much. We're good. Yeah. Okay. We have like 15 um, minutes, right? Yeah. But um, it's, it's optional, right, Solomon? Like if um, you, you have to go or something, you know, feel free. That basically concluded our workshop. I really appreciate appreciate you coming, spending your Saturday with us like a, like a good hour. Um, but again, if you have any other questions or want more information on engineering, mm -hmm. email us or, you know, on Instagram too or Facebook. But I feel like email and Instagram are the most active, so you can always hit us up there. Um, yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you, you're welcome. Thank you. So yeah, if you wanna play, you're more than welcome to, but if not, no pressure. Last remind, well, not last reminder, because I think I'm gonna be more reminding. Uh, there are office hours still going on. Please check out that um, a Google sheet that uh, was sent out an email. I will also send it out shortly after. Um, so the, <laughs> sorry, I don't know if you can hear that. Um, so that you can um, go ahead and go to office hours and ask for help in um, whatever you need. As we know, applications are due in about, what is it, uh, nine, nine days. Um, so we will read up on those um, PIQs or answer any application questions that you need help with as well as FAFSA or, you know, just come on in and chat and um, yeah, so that's it. That's all. Thank you. Um, so should we start the recording then since that basically concluded our, our workshop? You're right. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs>